It's time for us to report God to himself of his goodness, of his mercy. If God has been good to you this year, let your hallelujah be the loudest tonight. Hallelujah. Mention two, three things that you are thanking him for. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for his endless mercy. Thank him for Nigeria. Thank him for the redeemed Christian church of God. Thank him for our parents in the Lord. Thank him for putting clothes on your body, shoes on your feet, money in your pocket, shelter over your heads. Is there anybody that is grateful tonight? Shout hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Our Heavenly Father, we just want you to know that we appreciate you and that from the hearts of grateful children to the heart of a loving Father. Papa, thank you in Jesus' name. Now we'll take the online testimonies for the month of July 2023. A brother from the USA, he connected to the May 2022 Holy Ghost Night themed open doors. That the geo prophesied during the service that doors will open and that help would come. That he also said, the person you don't know will bring you help. At the June 2022 Holy Ghost service, that the Adeboye gave seven prophecies that he prayed on. All these prophecies were fulfilled in his life. He was selected for a program abroad in a top school, given full scholarship. His flight was paid for and was given a token to settle in the country based upon the word of knowledge from the throne of grace. Praise the Lord. Brother Sunday Daniel from Nigeria. He is thanking God for divine intervention. At the point of his daughter delivering her babies, he asked her to pray and call on the God of Daddy Adeboye. To the glory of God, she delivered normally, safely, a set of triplets and is now a grandfather of triplets. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Sister Inkiru Igwaku from Ireland. She suffered a fungal infection on her finger for over four years. All the different treatments did not work. She was in pain and experienced sleepless nights. She joined the April 23 Holy Communion service online. During the altar call, as she was clapping, Daddy Gio said, those clapping, your hands will not wither. I thought somebody would clap. As you are clapping, your hands will not wither. As you are clapping, your miracles would come. And suddenly, God did it for her. Her finger conformed and healing began miraculously immediately. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Those who are clapping tonight, your hand will never wither in Jesus' name. Assistant Pastor Janet Eki Omere from Malaysia. During the convention last year, Daddy Gio asked those looking for the fruit of the womb to step out for prayers. While she was in Malaysia, she stood in the gap for her niece, who had been waiting for the fruit of the womb for six years and gone through multiple IVFs without a positive outcome. To the glory of God, God gave her niece a baby girl this year. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. We will now take the live testifiers. Praise the Lord. My name is Olorunleye Adefunke. In 2015, I have motor accident. Fatal motor accident. I lost my memory. I forget everything about me. I can't speak any longer. I'm in coma for many years. But I bless the name of the Lord that God restored me back. 
I regain my memory. I can't write. I can't spell T again. I forget all. I give him praise. Last year, daddy is talking. Daddy say someone is there. God is working in your brain. Since that last year, I used to have headache too much. But since last year, God restored me. God give you me. God restore everything in me. I lost one of my leg, and God restored the leg back for me. I give you praise. I worship the name of the Lord for the life of my pastor, Erivona. He took me to the church that you can still make it again. And I'm blessed the name of the Lord that God restored me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Rise to your feet and shout hallelujah. When I say light, you say shine. Light, 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 light. Shout hallelujah. My name is Pastor Mrs. Kate Ojo. I, by the grace of God, the assistant head of Department Central Missions Board. I also had the welfare department and I go on field visitation with Dove Media. This is Sister Lilian Ogedengbe and Pastor Kenny here. And our missionaries were 11 in the vehicle. We were in Benue State and um, we were visiting our missionaries. And as we were going on the, the, we were about rounding up our field visitation. And as we were going, all of a sudden we just had gunshots. Before we know it, the Fulani were in front of us, shooting at us. The first testimony was that there was no bullet that penetrated any one of us. And they told us to get down from the vehicle. And another thing that God did for us was that there was no fear. The second thing was, they took their cutlass, they had cutlass, they had gun, they had pistol. They caught him on the right leg. The only thing you will use to know that there is a mark, there is a mark on his leg, but the cutlass did not penetrate. And they walked us into the forest. We walked for 14 hours. At the point we were, we were dry, we were exhausted, and God sent the rain. And I told my people, we started opening our mouths to take the water in. We crossed several rivers. At a point, we were falling because the ground was muddy. We passed through, I personally passed by a very big python, and it did me nothing. Another one of us went by a python that was on the tree, that was hanging down, and we got into the forest. Immediately we got there, they said, who be you? I said, I'm a pastor, I'm a child of God. They said, we know what we're supposed to don't do. Who be you? You are disturbing us. I said, I have told you, I am a child of God. They now said that we must answer to them. They said, no, you, you are not, no, no, no. You, you, who be you? That was the question they kept asking. We were kept there for four days. As we were going through the rivers, uh, my people at times would fall into the water and drink the water to rehydrate themselves. As we were going, everywhere was very, very dark. But the Lord was just giving us lightning. Once the lightning shines, we'll be able to see the path. We will move. Lightning will strike again. We will see the path. We will move. Lightning will strike again. We will see the path. We will move. When we got into the forest, they asked us to sit on the floor. We sat on the bare floor. Insects covered us. Bees were all around us. Not one stinged us. Not one. They came to us again. They were saying, what are you going to do since you are pastors? I told my people begin to pray. The man saw me shaking. He said, what did they do? I said, he did pray. He said what? He won't disappear. He said, he won't disappear. No prayer, no prayer, no prayer. He won't disappear, no prayer. He won't make it die. He won't make it die. Praise the Lord. So when we were there was when I remembered 
that I went to tell Mommy Gio, I went to give her a report, and I told her that I was going to Benway on field visitation. She said she was going to pack some things for the missionaries too. So when I came out, she told me to wait. So I was sitting outside when Daddy Gio was coming from prayer work. And normally when daddy comes like that, he will stretch his hand to us and just bless us, pray for us and go in. Or at times he could shake us if he's not praying. But this particular day, I was sitting down. When he came in, I went on my knees. Myself and two other pastors were there. Daddy came to where I was, laid his hands on me. And he started praying for me. When I got home, I told my husband, I said, daddy, Joe laid his hands on me today. And he was praying for me. Not long after that, Mommy Gio called my line again. And she started talking to me about Benue. She started encouraging me on our journey. Who sent us a text message? Mommy Gio. Brethren, the God of Adeboye is alive. The God of the Redeemed Christian Church of God is alive. No power of hell. No schemes of man. We have gone. We are still going. We will continue to go. But please listen. Amen. Amen. These people, they need us. They need the light. We are seeing that they are also captives. They are even saying we should pray for them. That they don't want to do this again. By the time we were leaving, they returned our phones. And they said, pray for us. We don't want to do this again. We prayed for them. But please, the whole world, we want you to rise up. Pray for kidnappers. Pray for ritualists. Pray for armed robbers. The Lord said he does not want the death of a sinner. But the sinner should repent and come to the knowledge of him. Brethren, please, let us pray. When the church pray, there is a turn around. When I say light, you say shine. Light. Light. Shine the light everywhere. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a miracle walking God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to give this testimony to the glory of God and to say thank you to Daddy Gio for not hiding the truth of the world from us. 2014, I just discovered that I had a growth on my eye. And within that period, I became so scared. I was afraid. And the growth kept on increasing. I was thinking of going to the hospital to find out whether it was malignant or benign. But at that time, I was assigned to go and give a lecture, the, the year three school of disciple. Towards the end of the lecture, that the Jew quoted a verse of the scripture, John 6, 63. The end of it says, The word that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And that the Joe says something. He said, the, Where angels cannot enter, the word entered. And that was it. My faith rose and every fear disappeared. So I said, God, where is, what of the, which word? And I was led to the book of Matthew 8 17 that says, He himself took away my. In fact, took away my infirmities and bear my sicknesses, and that was it. And I went back home, I started reading the reference that was quoted in that Bible, Isaiah 53, over and over again, over and over again. I said, You growth, I cannot see you. you are, whether you are there or not, I can't see you, and that is it. And within two weeks, the growth disappeared to the glory of God. Amen. Praise the living Jesus! Our names are Mr. and Mrs. Inkiruka from Redeemed Christian Church of God, Victory Temple, uh, Virginia, USA. Praise the Lord! The Lord is awesome. Uh, we got married 2013 and we have been waiting on the fruit of the womb for almost, um, our marriage is 10 years in July. And we've been waiting for almost nine years for the fruit of the womb. I remember during the pandemic, um, there was this special um, Ghost service for children. And it was like 
I was like, God, you just have to do it. And that the Adeboye was spraying and I was just converting and converting. I'm like, I'm going to have my own. So when it was 2021, my husband was like, you know what, let's just go do IVF. You know, we concluded we went to do the IVF. After four weeks, I was tested to see if I'm pregnant. I was pregnant. But instead of them telling me I was four weeks pregnant, they were telling me, you are almost two months pregnant. And I'm like, how is that possible? Can you, like, you know, explain to me? They could not explain. I went for the next appointment. And they said, you were already pregnant before we did the IVF. And I'm like, how? How is this possible? And I remember that before the IVF, I said, God, I'm your child. You give children freely. I would not pay for a child. I know you will give me mine. And that's how our funds, our, our thousands of dollars was refunded to us. Who did it? Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. My name is Sister Ade Akitomide Adeshion. I am from Oyo province 1, Ibadan. My testimony is that the Lord saved me and he kept me alive and he kept my baby alive. While I was pregnant, sometimes in February, I noticed that day I was just at home with my husband. I started seeing blood in my nose. So I felt, ah, what is this? I, I called my gynecologist and he told me probably it was the weather that I should take um, an, an ice pack and I should compress the nose. Later on, when it was, it was night, around 10, 10 p.m., I went to use the toilet. I noticed I urinated blood. So my husband said, okay, let's go to the hospital. So when we got to the hospital, they observed me and they placed me on some medication. The next morning, 4 a.m., I went to the toilet, the same thing happened. So the doctor said, now we are going to refer you to UCH. We got to UCH, I was placed on the bed, I, it was every opening in my body that blood was coming out. From my mouth, from my eyes, from my nose, from every opening in my body, blood was coming out. So the doctors, they were surprised. They were saying, what is this? They have not seen this type of thing before. We ran several type of tests. There's this thing called platelets in the body. They said it's supposed to be 150,000, but mine went as low as 2,000. So the doctor said, they cannot do CS for me, that I was going to bleed to death. They left me on the bed. I was, I continued bleeding. Every five, five minutes, I was urinating blood. So I just felt, I started singing, Jesu, oh, Jesu, oh, you are low, low, me at a me me At the point, I brought out my phone. I felt I was going to see that the GO's number, that I should just call him. And you should say, my daughter, it is well with you. But I kept the faith very strong. I got to the hospital on Sunday. I was there Sunday, Monday, on Tuesday morning. A doctor just came to me and said, Madam, how are you feeling? I said, I'm fine. He said, okay, can you get the scanning machine? Let me see what's happening with this woman. So they brought the scanning machine. The, man, the doctor said, this baby is getting tired, that they have to take me to the theater. They took me to the theater for an emergency CM, but they told me it is 50-50, but they are going to save me alone. I, felt, I just looked up and said, God, please, I'm going to come back into this world with my baby and myself. They took me to the theater, they placed me on oxygen, they transfused blood, they did everything. But I thank God that I am alive and my baby is alive. Hallelujah. After, after the surgery, they did PCV for me. My blood was as low as 15%. Before I left UCH, all the components of blood I collected was like 24. At a point, I had a dream and I saw that the G.O. laying his hand on my head. That was all. Till everything cleared. I spent like three weeks in UCH. But I want to thank God that I am alive. My baby is alive. I want to give God all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the miracle walking God. Lord, we are grateful. Lord, we are thankful. Praise the Lord. My name is um, Sister Adegbite Adenike um, from Lagos Province 78. It happens 2021, July, exactly two years ago. 
that day was the day of my birthday and I was somewhere I just felt a pain a sharp pain under my left uh, chest so that day I was like what's happening then I got home in the afternoon I was restless I was having a dig my body system everything changed my husband was not around as at that time I called him on phone that I was feeling somehow that I don't know what was wrong with me he asked me to visit our hospital so I visit the hospital that we are using when I got there the doctor check on me he said madam are you diabetic I said no he said do you, are you hypertensive I said no he said what I'm seeing now I think we need to refer you to the general hospital I said is it that serious he said yes but I will give you a medication that will calm you down for some minutes I was panting I was breathing very fast so he gave me some medications for me to lie down for some you no know, minutes then around, around about 30 minutes or one hour after he asked me to go to the general hospital i got to the general hospital that day they said ah madam you came late we are closed already okay what really happened to you i was telling them that i was not feeling too well the doctor just said okay madam let me just check on you and let me give you some medication then you come back the second day and that was how the whole thing started later i was on emergency for one week in the general hospital i was asked to run some ecg to check my heart i was asked to do breast mammogram because i could not differentiate whether i'm feeling pains in my chest or in my breast after some series of treatments in general hospital for so many months we were referred to lawsuit and in Nikeja. and when i got there i was transferred to hematology department when i got there they said that I, I ran a test called a, a bone marrow test. I did bone marrow test. They did my platelet. They said, Madam, this blood is too low. Then later, I was asking the doctor, what exactly are you treating me for? Because they gave me some drugs to be taken. And the doctor said, eh, the test was insignificant. We cannot really say precisely the outcome of the test. But that drug they gave me, it seems as if they are using that drug for cancer. Then after some time, I could not stand straight. I have to bend my body. I could not lie down on my chest. For 10 months, I could not lie down at my back. My husband has to carry me if I want to lie down. If I want to stand up, he must carry me. For me to use the toilet or to sit down, everything. I was in so much pain. And anytime we go, we always we run tests of five series of tests. The other particular time, the, the last time I went to the hospital, they referred me from hematology to gastro department. And they said, I have a problem with my liver. When we got there, the doctor said, Madam, the patients are too more than the doctors. We have to give you three months appointments. You have to come. That was around May. You have to return back by August ending or first week in September. That was when my pastor met with my provincial pastor and the letter was written to the GO. And after a month, I received a message that I should come to the camp. And I came, that the GO laid hands on me. And since that day, my healing started. Then in August, during the, co during the um, convention, a man gave a testimony here that he has a problem with his spine. He brought a test after, the, after he got his healing. Immediately the man was sharing that testimony. I jumped up from my seat and I felt that my back, like a, something, a shift in my back because my bone at my back, my spine bulged out during that sickness. I was there for one and a half years. And that's how my healing started. Since the day that the Jew lay hands on me, Hallelujah. I have not visited last week. The appointment they gave me, I did not go back. The Lord has been doing this. I was okay. I can stand straight. I can bend. I can turn. I can do everything. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory, 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 glory be to our God. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I bless the name of the Lord. My name is Mosumola Oladoshi from Lagos Province 80, Region 31. In the year 2014, that was in Old Auditorium, that the GO, before it began the ministration, by word of knowledge, it declared that there's somebody in this place, you said God has done everything, only that has not given us ban. He said, very soon we testify. And before the end of that month, May, it was May, by June, I met my husband. Hallelujah. 
In 2016, we got married, but by October, I had miscarriage due to fibroid, and we began to look for ways to get treatments. Along the line, some people wanted to raise funds to assist us. Then God spoke in Yoruba and said, Tomba friend lomo, surely friend lomo. And when he spoke, I know. He said, no way, don't go for it. So I had to pause. We began to use the anointed handkerchief and the only communion. By 2018, chunks of the fibroid came out. Miraculously. And the same year, God helped me to conceive. And by 2019, when the pregnancy was going to nine months, by first week of June, I began to bleed. I bled to the point that doctors said they don't know what to do again. And they recommended me for evacuation. In the midnight when they've gone, I began to shout hallelujah. And in the cause of shouting hallelujah, the baby began to kick again. The next morning when I went for the evacuation, the scan, the doctor said what I'm seeing and what they wrote. They are two different things. On the day of delivery, the fibroid was still there. The agreement was to bring out the baby and not the fibroid. But by the time they brought out the baby, they discovered that they cannot close my tummy again. So they had to fight for my life. The struggle began. And suddenly the doctor said, Oh, wow, wow, Roma. I will Shani. They said it in Yoruba. And I said, Holy Spirit, teach them what to do. Suddenly, he brought a consultant that was on his off day. The man came and God rescued me. After taking pints of blood, my blood level was at 23%. And they said I had to take more. I asked for Holy Communion again. I took Holy Communion. And I began to say, the blood of Jesus flowed to me from Calvary. And I took two pints of blood. From 23%, my blood level rose to 24. Please, let's pay attention. From 23%, it rose to 24. And I took one pint of blood. After all the communion, my blood level rose from 24% to 40% in a general hospital in Lagos State. And they said, I will go for secondary suture because the wound did not close. I gave it in July. I was discharged in September. I gave it in July. I was discharged in September. The wound did close. They gave me some things to buy. I bought them. And I said, God, nobody, boy, who closed the Red Sea? Hey. Miraculously. Hey. Closed the wound. Amen. And that was how he closed the wound. Within three days, here I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dominion. I want to give you. I want Jesus. He said, Thank you, Lord. We bow. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord. We Hallelujah. bow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Awesome, God. Our final testifier tonight. Awesome. Praise the Lord. My name is My name is Mrs. Pascaline Oyawoye. I'm a member of the RCCG Jubilee House of All Nations in London and the pastor Yele Afolabi. We've been married since July 2012. Today, it's actually 11 years. And we've been waiting for the fruit of the womb. We've tried different medical intervention. It failed on three different times. I remember last year, September Holy Ghost, the children one. Daddy Gio called all the women with the children. And I said, God, I tuned in. Me too, I will come on this altar to testify with my son. In May this year, God blessed us with Oluwaniyi, Mugusho Oyawaye. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise and give glory to this God? You are a miracle walking God. He's a miracle walking God. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. Awesome God. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Father, we give you the praise. Father, we give you the glory. Let's celebrate this God. He's a miracle walking God. He's our God. He's our King. He's our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. The only God. Healing from loss of memories. Deliverance from kids.
kidnappers, growth disappearing, babies after several years. Oh, we thank you for the Holy Communion, that you, for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You're a miracle, working God. Father, we are grateful. Nobody loves us like you do. Nobody cares for us like you do. Before we call, you answer. While we are yet speaking, my Father, you are the one who gives the miracles. Even things that we didn't know that we need. Growth disappearing, my Father. The power that is in the blood of Jesus, bringing healing, bringing wholeness, Thank you for removing fry broad. Thank you for bringing the dead back to life. Thank you for saving from kidnappers. Who is a God like unto you? Merciful God, righteous God, faithful God. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Papa, we give you the glory and we honor you today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have thanked. Can all the grateful people in the house shout hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated as I have good news for you. That you are the next person in line for a miracle. You will come here to this altar and you will testify. Your testimony will go to the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah.